Hi everyone. I'm just uh, seeing if everything is working as it should. Yeah, seems everything is okay. So if uh, Let's just uh, dive into it. So, just a small recap uh, from last uh, uh, from the last stream. So we have this use case where we want to be able to control um, or to bypass the group policies, and we need to control uh, what an application sees uh, in the registry, basically. So to achieve this. Uh, we are going to use well-known te uh, techniques, so it's nothing uh, brand new. So it's going to be DLL injection and detouring uh, the um, execution flow of functions. So they are not novel te techniques, uh, but it's going to be interesting to see if, this, if they can be leveraged to force an, uh, an application to do something uh, that was... Uh, to allow something to be done that wasn't supposed to because it was configured on the registry through group policies so in this case would be for instance firefox allowing the installation of add-ons when it it wasn't uh, it isn't allowed by registry um, we also saw that uh, in the previous stream let me just show you so in the registry uh, when you configure the, the Firefox group policy on your uh, domain, on your Windows domain, it will create on the um, machines, on the various computers, uh, under the Hive, the local machine Hive, which is a Hive that usually is only um, changeable by uh, system administrators. And it creates a bunch of keys uh, with the options that you want. Um, in this case, uh, we have here the block uh, about add-ons and also, I think it's here. Yeah, the add-ons show pane. And so if we launch Firefox, we can see here that the add-ons page is blocked. So what we want to do is develop something that as a normal user without having to change the registry allows us to bypass this uh, group policy enforced restrictions which then can be used for many other um, applications and uh, situations okay so Let's get, get down to it. So in the last stream, we managed to launch Firefox. So our, pros, uh, our approach is since we are, our premise is that we don't have administrative privileges, we will launch Firefox um, and then we will inject the DLL because at that point in time, since this application will be the parent process of Firefox, it can modify the memory of Firefox and inject libraries, change code, batch, do whatever it wants with the Firefox process. Uh, if we just launch Firefox and then we would try as a normal application and then try to inject the library, it wouldn't work because since Windows, uh, if I'm not 100% sure, I would have to Google it but or to search for it. But uh, I have, uh, if I remember correctly, since Windows XP SP2, Service Pack 2, that uh, doing these sort of things, opening random process and writing into their memory is uh, an operation that is reserved if you have administrative privileges. So we successfully uh, managed to 
on last stream to develop the inje the the opening of the the Firefox process. So if I click injector, it opens the Firefox process. So now the next step, uh, and what we're gonna focus on this stream is uh, uh, is to inject the the library. So to do that. Um, we will have to create Firefox in a suspended state. So if we do like this, we have application name and then we have here DW creation flags. Okay. So if we say that we want to create the process suspended, we do it like this. How many other flags there are? Many, many flags. Okay, there are many flags that you can use for process creation. I'm just gonna go through them and see if uh, there's anything else that we might want to, a uh, to add. Because I'm doing this by uh, by memory and I haven't done this sort of uh, code in uh, <laughs> some time now, so. I don't think so. I think it's good enough that we have this. I don't think we need any other. Okay, this looks good. So what will happen is that the Firefox process will be created um, but it won't execute. Everything will be loaded into memory. Uh, all the reallocations, the libraries, uh, everything is loaded, but the process uh, doesn't get called. The main function of the process doesn't get called. So let's try to see if that is what happens. Hopefully, yeah, you can see here, Firefox was created but is in suspended state. So if we kill this one, and then we have to kill all of those. Oi, my bad. We have to kill all, all Firefoxes, all Firefox instances. Right. Okay. Um, so this will allow us, this will give us time to inject the library because the process is completely loaded but is nothing is running so we can then inject the library do the changes that we want and when the changes are done we resume the execution of the process and it and the process will uh, execute with our changes already implemented so we can for sure guarantee that we intercept the calls uh, to to the registry. So let's uh, just try to do that. Uh, so we created it suspended. So okay. this call. So I think. To resume the process we need to resume the thread and it's gonna have to be oh, sorry process info and then the handle to the the main thread of the the process so let's try it and this time instead of the process staying in uh, suspended mode it should automatically launch a Firefox window should appear straight away. Yep, so that's exactly what we want. So what needs to happen is before we call this again, or not again, before we call this, we need to inject the library. So we will need some things for this to happen. 
we are going to need some addresses. So we're gonna need some addresses and some handles. So we're gonna get uh, the handle to the kernel 32 DLL. So if we do get module handle. I think this still works straight away like this. I don't think um, I don't think we need to I think we can base the, the, the code injection on the addresses that are returned from the so from the uh, from this process the injectors process uh, memory. So what I mean by this is that uh, due to exploit mitigation te techniques like a ASLR and uh, all these sort of things, the addresses on one process might not be exactly the same as in another process. So the address be before in older versions of Windows, it was pretty consistent. Uh, you would know that for a specific version of Windows, the kernel 32 was always loaded on the same memory uh, address space or on the same addressing memory, sorry. Um, in With the newer versions, for instance, in this case, Windows 10, and with all the exploit mitigations uh, technologies, I'm not sure uh, if that is still the case. Uh, so let's assume it is, is it, is, it still is. Uh, and if not, then we'll um, have to basically uh, go to this uh, to the Firefox process memory parse the, the, the portable executable headers uh, and get the addresses for the functions that we need in this case it will be the load library function so um, so what I'm gonna do even better far proc I'm going to encapsulate some uh, calls. Uh, grab, get the proc address, and then yeah. oh, sorry. So kernel. Hopefully this. Still work. So, and now we want the procedure that we want is load library A. So we're gonna use the um, ANSI version of the the call for now because also all of this code while I'm developing it to be uh, Unicode slash uh, ANSI agnostic uh, is still being compiled as ANSI um, so I will use the load library a function and uh, once we convert it to Unicode uh, or we compile it as Unicode then we'll change it to load library W if we feel the need to otherwise it just stays as it is so this should give us the load the libra library a function address. So let's just test that. I'm gonna open it in the debugger. Does it still, hopefully, still have some of the breakpoints? I don't think so. Okay, so what I'm going to do, run it once. Still on the breakpoint, right? Yeah, still on breakpoint. So, and I'm gonna find is the get procedure address function. 
going to add a breakpoint in it. Yeah. And then I'm just going to run it until it breaks on the get procedure address. And if you can, if you look here, that's our call. That's the call for the library. And if we run until return, EAX or not EAX. It should be Rax. Okay. Let me just. Step into. Oh, no, sorry. Yeah, it's Rax. So Rax is saying zero. So it didn't, it failed to find the address. I think I know why. Because I I used the wrong name for the library, so get module until for so return null and then get procedure get proc address uh, also return null. So I got the name wrong here. It's kernel. It's only one L. Uh, so let's just uh, try that again. Yes. <clears throat> Uh, the breakpoint is still valid, so let's just run it. So now, yeah, so you can see here now Rax, uh, R A X, um, has the address for uh, load library, is it? Oh no, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes yeah now it should have yeah now it has the address sorry <laughs> now it has the address for the load library a i was seeing i was thinking uh, i was saying something wrong and i indeed i was saying something wrong um so that's all good so we can find the address of uh, load library So what do we need to do next? So the next thing we need to do is, and it will be clearer once we get there, um, or it will be a lot more clearer when we get there, uh, but we do need to, to allocate uh, memory on the Firefox process, and then we need to create a remote thread on the Firefox process, and as I said, it it might not, it will be clearer afterwards, uh, and it's easy to explain as we go why that why we need to do that, and why we need to find out uh, the address for the load library function. It, it, it might already be a little bit obvious uh, due to the name, but uh, another thing I'm gonna do also already. Is go to the library and compile it. And then I'm gonna copy. I should have here something so I'm just already putting here the library because then what we're gonna do I think yeah so we will then check uh, the Firefox modules I'm not sure if I have a better way of there's a better way for sure of doing this I should have here uh, process explorer or something, but uh, I thought I did have sys internals installed in this computer. Clearly, I do not. So I do need to install sys internals tools so I can have the process uh, explorer. Uh, something that we can do afterwards. So. First thing, get the load library a function address. We already have that. 
Now we need to allocate virtual memory on the on the Firefox process. So for that we're gonna use virtual alloc x ex uh, extended function. So then we'll for the process we already have. So is process info h process. Um, I was just checking something. I, I might need to go back to this one. I think I have the impression that I'm missing something, but so and then since we don't have get an address, so it doesn't really matter. Now the size. It's going to be basically the string length uh, how do you get the string length in an agnostic length uh, <clears throat> Anyways, we are compiling for ANSI, so let's just do it like this, and then um, and then we'll figure out the rest afterwards. String land, and then we need the library, so the library path. And we will multiply it by the size of... I'm sorry, this is I need, this is the different keyboard layout than I am used to using on a daily basis. So, so the size of is going to be of, if we click here, we need one single element. should be char which is the <sighs> yeah perfect in this case okay and allocation type uh, if I'm mem commit I think yes mem commit and the protection is mem no, uh, I don't remember the name of the. I don't remember the name of the variable. What is the name of the variable? Let me just search here. Uh, uh, here. Where did I put it? Because okay. I used it in something else. Did I cut it? Oh, nice. I don't even have the. Um, so, if it's not this one, no, it's not this one. Let's see if I have the. Oh, no, I don't have here the constants. 
Okay, I was trying to not have to Google it to search for it, so let's just search for it. It's easier, apparently. Uh, so it's mem. Mem commit, I think. Um, it's easier if we go to virtual alloc x msdn, which is still, <laughs> even though it doesn't exist anymore, but uh, it still gives you always the, the, the right results. So it's mem commit, which is the first one, but the protection level, what is the name of the FL protect memory? Oh, it's page. Okay, it's not, yeah. So we need we need page read write. We don't want we don't necessarily need the memory to be executable. We just need it to be writable. So why are we doing this? So load library a function uh, takes one pa one parameter. It takes basically the name or the path to the library that you want to load. So what we are doing is we are getting the, the address for the, the function, the load library A function. We are allocating on the Firefox process enough uh, memory to write this path into, this path, which is the library that you, we want uh, to be loaded then uh, we will create the remote thread on on firefox we'll create a thread on the firefox process on the address for the load library function where we pass the the located memory as a parameter so basically we are inv remotely invoking on the firefox process the load library function using a remotely allocated uh, uh, memory with the, the name of the library or the path of the library that we want to load as a parameter. And that's what is going to, and that's the most basic type of uh, DLL injection. We allocate the memory or the size of the memory that we have to allocate is always the size of the string multiplied by the size of one character of this string. Since we are compiling for ANSI, uh, one character is one byte, so I could just do this and just pass on the string. But since we might change it to a Unicode build, then this string will have two bytes uh, for each character. So that's why I'm doing the size of, because this instead of being current, currently is a char, which is one byte, if it's the Unicode build, it will be um, a short. So it will be uh, two bytes long. Um, doing this is perfect. So what I need now is to save the pointer uh, for the the parameter for the um, I'm gonna call it library path. I'm not gonna do much error handling because I should be doing error handling uh, when I call this function, when I call this function, but I just wanna see, uh, make it work, and then uh, concern myself. I will concern myself uh, with error handling uh, afterwards. So, next step. Create remote thread and process info handle of the process. No security, stack size zero, it will figure out for itself. So the stack this LP start address will be then or the address for the load library function. 
the parameter will be then the library path the creation flags i'm not 100 percent sure which ones they should be oh and we need and we also need i will have to check the word Just call it remote. What is? I'm gonna go to the documentation of the. Of the function, so it returns a handle. Okay, we need that. We will need that. Okay, and what are the flags? Yeah, so we'll um, use there zero. So here, okay. I hate when this happens. Was it question flag zero and uh, let's ignore the the thread identifier let's just um, say zero and null yeah. this by itself I'm sorry should be more than enough if there's no errors in the code, uh, should be more than enough to load the our library into the into Firefox uh, memory. So after that is done. We need to cause the handle and then we need to be polite and free the remotely allocated memory uh, zero it will free the entire page if I'm not mistaken if we say on the vir virtual free uh, x uh, if we say zero it will um, free the entire page that was or the multiple pages that were used uh, on this call so we don't actually need to pass on uh, this it will automatically uh, clean it up for us we don't need to be very this is release if I'm not mistaken this should be all that we need and um, and if there are no errors we should all good uh, there's an error ah it's conversion errors What am I missing? Wait. Too few arguments. Oh yes, indeed. Infinite. Also, I'm using here uh, a print when uh, the application is now uh, a GUI application. So, yep, it worked. So let's just just try it out.
So at least Firefox launched properly. I need to find a better way to do this. In PowerShell, I should even be able to do it. But... I'm not seeing it here. Uh, just to be sure. I'm pretty sure it didn't work. So I'm just gonna be sure that. No, I couldn't find it. Um, did I select the right paths? I wrote the right path, library.tll. Well, for reals. Yeah, but it's in the desktop for the researcher. So. Just to be sure. I am going to Oh, wrong VM. Yeah, it's okay. So this is the right path. So what I'm going to do is make this a uh, console application. Is there a read key or something? No, let's do scan F then. I don't need to do this, right? Okay, wait. I don't need to do this. Um, because I can debug this. And if I can debug this, I can debug the Firefox process as well. So I don't actually need to do this. Uh, I was going to do some hackish stuff. So let's just... Let's just debug it differently. I did copy the new version, right? I didn't forget to to copy the right version into still says it's 35 which is weird oh sorry yeah, 39 so it's updated No, I'm not seeing the library. Didn't seem. It didn't seem to load the library. No, the 
just to be sure. No, it's not. Uh, no, it didn't. Okay. So it clearly didn't load the library, so let's just uh, put this on the debugger and see what is going on. So we want we want um, a virtual lock we also want the create remote thread the virtual lock x uh, and we already had the get procedure address so let's just go with the flow get procedure address so if we run until return then it, we step into it it should be in the main code um, and we have here the load library and we step into it uh, 27 that seems legit And we call virtual lock x And it did seem to allocate memory. You can see here, it did allocate memory. Ah, <laughs> uh, now I know why it failed. It's because I'm not writing. Uh, I allocated the memory, but I didn't ra uh, wrote the um, yes, I didn't wrote the DLL path into the Firefox memory. So when you call the load library function, he's like, uh, "There's nothing here." So but what I'm going to do as well, uh, maybe can I launch another one as admin? Because what I'm going to do as well is attach to the Firefox process. I'm just gonna run. I'm going to get this address. Uh, memory dump. Sorry, my bad. Go to, sorry. Expression. So it's completely zeros. So if we add the right process memory uh, call, then we would see here the library path. So let's aim for that. Let's see if there's no Firefox staying there in memory. Yeah, it stayed. So one task, one task. There's no more Firefox. Yeah, I located every. I forgot to write process memory. And info and all process. So we want to write into the library path. We want to pass it. 
I'm gonna pass the library and we want to say let me just double check the documentation see what we get here uh, a pointer to a variable the parameters ignored so I'm gonna ignore it then so we wanna write this amount of bytes and we don't care about how many of them were actually written copy and let's open it in a, in a debugger and we will also then debug the, the Firefox process once it's it's launched so let's see if the breakpoints are still there the breakpoints are still there, which is good. So, entry point, get proc address. And if we go here, we are now where we are supposed to be. And what we want is just before this call. Let's just run. It's allocating the memory. And then just before it writes it into it. RDX, I think, right? Copy value. RDX now let's attach to the Firefox process. Let's run it. Then go to expression. Should be clean. Perfect. Now run it Rax seems the right process memory seems to have succeeded because it returned uh, one and if we look here here we go you can see here the path was written into the Firefox process memory great so now uh, create remote thread so if we execute until we turn, then we single step it. It should have loaded. Uh, where's the modules? Uh, maybe it's called just single. No, oh, where's the modules? View. modules here it is interesting it's not showing the load library uh, the loaded library let's see here oh yeah but it's loaded it's there interesting oh no it's here oh i didn't see it yeah i was looking at uh it's here so it did load our library so basically we achieved um, an um, library injection so cool so if I run it we use another yeah
Uh, yep, injector. Seriously, why aren't you? Oh, thank you. I think it's. Um, well, I'm wondering why the injector is still running. Um, is it still running? Yeah, it should be, because the debugger is still. Still running. Um, why would that be so? Ah, it's probably here. No, it's probably stuck here. Is it possible that it's stuck here? Is that so? Why would it be stuck? Hmm. Interesting. So basically, what I think is happening is that this call here. is not is blocking even though the thread was created and executed successfully because the dll was loaded hmm. let me check check my cheat sheet all right so okay let's try it without this uh, maybe it's a yeah for sure it will not block this time but uh, I want to Because I want to wait for the thread to finish. Because I want it to do everything that it needs to do. seeing anything that rings a bell so mm. let's see how it goes I don't think this is it <clears throat> Let's use this one. Oh, reflective. I like this. It uses this so it's basically a wrapper function okay uh, 
Ja. Okay. But it has a time, a timeout. Wondering why that might be. Wondering why that might be. Why this is why this has to be why the the handle okay you see wait for single object might be so do I need an account? yeah I need an account so. This is also what I'm getting here. Um, I'm not being very talkative, sorry for that, but uh, I'm just reading up on uh, all stuff. And indeed. Okay, so this is another thing. Everybody should. Doesn't seem to be that long. Zoom in. I want to zoom. Oh, it's here. Oh, way too much. So create remote thread, and then he does it. it is... You see, this is the basic, or more or less, what exactly what I did. He calls get module handle, gets the load library function, 
creates a remote thread on it and then it waits for a single object. Okay, let's... Um, and this is a book, so... see if I'm process null null and the rest is null null as well so it says process then null null whatever zero load library load library file um, why is it passing remote string and then null null yeah that's, that's pretty much it it was some breakpoint something that went wrong when I was debugging so I'm just gonna create a new version and run it without a, a debugger now it seems okay now and most likely the injector is gone yeah, Firefox is loaded. Some background processes, I don't know. But if we look at Firefox. Uh, did it fail? Ah. Wait, how many Firefoxes do we have? Okay. <laughs> we might have a problem here. Because we have, yes, now I'm thinking of it. We have multiple Firefox processes because Firefox nowadays um, splits into or forks. That's no good. That's no good at all. Hmm. How many Firefox processes do we have? We have three, four, five. So let's just copy. Well, uh, Firefox implemented the, nowadays they fork into different processes. It's basically the tabs mostly. And they do this uh, to create processes isolation and whatnot, to, to, uh, to create sandboxes and all these other things to protect the, the computer from attacks from uh, remote exploits. So basically, we are injecting the library only on the first Firefox process, which might even get terminated afterwards. So I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't even have the library here. This is no good. Interesting. I wasn't expecting this problem. I was expecting many problems, but. So it loads the library nicely. But then Firefox itself most likely forks. Just to be sure that I didn't miss any Firefox instance, which I'm pretty sure I didn't. Interesting. So how can we solve this? This is really, really interesting. Quite the challenge, right? Uh, let me be sure 
as no Firefox is running. No Firefox process is running. Uh, breakpoints, none of them. This is the only breakpoint I need right now. Oh, okay. Uh, it still kept the. Uh, okay, cool. It still kept uh, this breakpoint. So, we will return into Firefox process menu. So, if we. Play. So you can see here library and the Firefox process ID is this one. I'm pretty sure this process is going to die. search for it yeah so the original pro firefox process um, dies because it spawns all the the children processes and it dies so how can we solve this Because in the original Firefox process, we are able to inject the library, um, but then this library doesn't really matter because the Firefox process uh, exits. So what I would say is, we're gonna leave it for uh, the next stream. Um, it's already been an hour of a stream. I I have an idea of how we could pro potentially do this. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's going to be uh, quite tricky uh, because we would basically have to intercept every create process that Firefox does And, uh, and inject the library when that happens for every single child process that Firefox creates. Um, which is interesting. Uh, we could do this okay okay let's leave it as a challenge for the next uh, stream um, it's going to be quite interesting to see how we can uh, deal with it in any case thank you very much for watching and um, talk to you soon see you